there, kids. Hi oh. there, Mullet. Hi, Karen. Hi, kids. Well, Mullet, you're not looking yourself today. Did something bad happen to you? Yeah, I got in big trouble from the teacher. I got a detention, honey, Karen. Oh, no. How did that happen, Mullet? Well, I didn't hand in my homework and... Oh, but... Didn't you know you, you had homework to do? Well, I sort of forgot about it on the day that we got it. But you remembered later, right? Yeah, well, well that night I finally found my homework. It was at the bottom of my bag. Oh, that's good. So you did your homework then? Uh, well, the homework was kind of hard to do because it had uh -huh. my juice popper had leaked on it and my sausage sandwich had gotten all over it oh that sounds really gross doesn't it oh well you you cleaned it didn't you and then you uh, did I, your I didn't really clean it but i i tried to do the homework and the worksheet and i did it uh-huh and so you gave it to your teacher the next day right not exactly i forgot about it and left it on my desk Oh, no, Mullet. Well, what about the next day? Yeah, well, you see, when I looked for it after school, um, this is what had happened to it. Because my dog ate my homework. <laughs> I, I think he liked the juice popper, and I think he liked the sausage on it. So I couldn't hand it in, honey, Karen. It was all wrecked. Oh, Mullet. Sounds like you're making a lot of big excuses about your homework. Uh, yeah, I suppose I am. Uh, but, but my dog actually ate my homework. Mm, like, I'm not even lying about that. I, I know. But yeah, you're uh, right. A lot I of probably, excuses. I probably should have just done it straight away and put it somewhere safe instead of at the bottom of my bag. I, and you uh, probably should say sorry to your teacher because yeah, you could have done it if I'll you really I'll say sorry to her to. for making all these... Poor excuses. Well, you know, Mullet, we've been reading the book of 1 Samuel together. Yeah. And the part that we're up to today is all about the first king of Israel, and he actually made lots of big excuses too. Like Mullet? Do you want to hear about it? Oh, I'd love to. Let's, let's hear the story, kids. Last week we heard how the people of Israel asked God for a king. They failed to see that God is their king. But God told Samuel to give them a king. Now God told Samuel he'd meet a man. And that very day, Samuel met a man named Saul. Saul was looking for some donkeys he'd lost. As soon as Samuel saw Saul, God told him that this was the man who'd be king. Samuel said to Saul, God has chosen you to be king. Don't worry. The donkeys you'd lost have been found. Now go home and wait. Seven days later, Samuel gathered all the people together. Samuel called for Saul. Saul? But Saul didn't come. God told Samuel that Saul was hiding among the bags. That's where they found Saul, their king. Hiding. But when the people saw how tall and handsome Saul was, they shouted, Long live the king! Saul looked like he'd be the perfect king. But it wasn't long before their king proved to be a disaster. Not long after, God's people went off to fight their enemy. God had told Saul to wait until Samuel came. Samuel was the one who was to offer the special sacrifice. But Saul's men were becoming increasingly afraid. The Philistines might attack them at any moment. Some of Saul's men began to run away. Saul panicked. He couldn't wait any longer for Samuel. So Saul did what God had said only Samuel should do. He offered a special sacrifice to God. Just when Saul had finished making the sacrifice, Samuel arrived. Saul tried to make excuses for what he'd done, but Samuel stopped him because Saul had disobeyed God. God would now choose someone else to be king. But still, Saul didn't learn. Not long after, Saul went off with his army to fight another enemy. God had told Samuel to tell Saul that he would win the battle. 
But when he did, he had to destroy everything that belongs to the enemy. That's exactly what happened. Saul won, but he decided to keep his enemy's best sheep and cows. Saul went to Samuel and said, I've obeyed God. And Samuel could hear the noise the sheep and the cows were making. First, Saul blamed his soldiers for keeping the sheep and cows. Then he said he took them so that he could offer them as gifts to God. And finally, he said he took the sheep and cows because he was scared of his soldiers. Excuse after excuse after excuse. Saul had disobeyed God, but he never admitted it, nor did he say sorry. Oh, and Karen, King Saul made so many excuses. He was just like me. He did, didn't he? The people had wanted a king so they could be just like all the other nations. And he looked pretty impressive to start with. He did, didn't he? He looked good on the outside. But he failed to trust and obey God. He made so many excuses. So God rejected him as king, didn't he? He did. And God chose another man to be king. Someone who would trust and obey him. <gasps> I think I know who that is. But we'll, we'll find out next more week. next week. <laughs> hey, Annie Karen, we've got a perfect king, don't we? We do. We have King Jesus. Jesus is God's perfect king. The one who has trusted and obeyed God completely. He never made excuses and failed. He didn't. Isn't it great to follow King Jesus? It is. I hope you all follow King Jesus, kids. Annie Karen, thank you for that story. Thanks, kids. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.